um, you know, I think this game may be scary. <laughs> Hi everyone, so today I'm playing a bloody painter dating sim. And despite the words dating sim, uh, here's some content warnings. So, you know, in this game, players can easily die. If you encounter a murderer, please call the police first. It's unrealistic to develop a romantic relationship with a murderer. Alright, bloody painter dating sim, let's start. I'm a little... Ah, ah. With a severe headache, you wake up in an unfamiliar place. As you touch the bruise on the back of your head, it seems you were hit by something heavy before you lost consciousness. A heavy iron chain tied around your feet, someone has you trapped here. You try to remember what happened before you lost consciousness, but you can't recall anything. <sighs> Let's investigate the surroundings first. <laughs> I know she's just generic MC, but she kind of reminds me of, um... Oh my god, the MC from, uh, Mystic Messenger. <laughs> uh... I mean, the mattress looks nice and clean. There's a mattress on the floor. The mattress feels really hard to lie on. Or to investigate next. No signal. I might be in a remote place or underground. Hmm. The room is surrounded by four walls without any windows. The room is surrounded by four walls without any windows. It's weirdly cleaned up when no ashes or sand can be seen. Looks like a prison built by a germaphobe. Ah, uh, door. <laughs> Meals the last I want to look at here. You peek through the keyhole, but you see nothing inside. I wonder where I am. Alright, the meal. Oh, I mean, it looks nice, and it gave me a spork. <laughs> Near the door, there's a serving spaghetti with tomato sauce and a bottle of water. And a round plastic fork that's completely harmless was thoughtfully attached. It's still warm. It feels like it was sent here not long ago. Uh, that's everything. And the investigation? Yes. What's the next move? Listen. You can't hear any sound other than your own breathing. The soundproofing in this room seems particularly good. Uh, yell for help? I doesn't feel like that's gonna work, but... I'm not gonna yell or I'm not gonna knock over the food. I'm gonna go sleep. You sure? Yeah. I don't trust the food just yet, and I don't want to yell. I don't want to seem... <laughs> At least it sound, the, the, the thing's soundproof, so it makes no sense to yell. You lay on the bed. You try to sleep under this condition. Maybe it's the fatigue caused by nervousness, but you still fall asleep. Ow. You open your eyes after hearing some noises. Like, give give this like fur? Is this not Sans? <laughs> is this not Sans Undertale? <laughs> a tall man wearing a mask is squatting on the ground and looking at you with his head tilted. He remains silent as if he's sizing up his prey. He points to the plate on the floor, like indicating that you should finish your meal quickly. Thinking that the strange man might have poisoned the meal, you shake your head in fear. <sighs> <laughs> Seeing you have no intention of eating, he looks quite distressed. You can't die. Oh, well, that's, like, nice of him. Not now. Oh. He slowly speaks with a deep and steady voice. The freezer is full. Oh. <laughs> I'm not special, I'm just last. <laughs> huh? What does that mean? The freezer is full, and there's no space for more. Seven days. He pauses and thinks. There won't be space until seven days later. If you die now, you'll rot. Uh, oh, what do you mean? So I only have seven days left to live? He nods and walks out the door. Wait! You can't just leave me here like this! Please! 
Your cries can't stop the door from closing. So I'm guessing I have seven days to not die. Got it. Let's investigate. Oh, a bread and bottle of water. You peek outside from the keyhole. You see the shadow of the man walking around. Seems to be busy with something. <sighs> what is he doing? Sleep to the end of the day? Sure. I guess I was, go I was gonna eat the bread this time. <laughs> Please try to improve your survival rate within seven days. Damn it, no, I was gonna eat it! <laughs> Let's investigate. Empty plate. You check the keyhole. You seem to see something. You see that there's a vague figure at the end of the door. Observe. You sense something wrong and realize that... and realize what that is after narrowing your eyes. That has an artwork made of a human body, not a human being. Oh, hi! <laughs> I mean, ah! You hear the door open. You slowly push the door, and there's no trace of the strange man. First, you go into a room with a large freezer, sink, and operating table. And you open another heavy door. You find yourself in a room full of display- full of glass display jars. The jars are filled with specimens made from human body parts. It's like you're in an art museum. Huh. <laughs> could that be... Could it be that he wanted to freeze me as material for specimen artwork? You're thinking. You're seeing this scene. <laughs> Is the normal reaction. However... I'm going for smooches, so... Admire! You look around and admire his work with relish. You look at them for 15 minutes straight- 15 minutes?! Dear God, that's a bit longer than I thought we were doing this for. Interesting. You hear a voice coming from the corner. Yeah, see? I knew! I knew he wasn't- <laughs> Let me just go. Running stupid. <laughs> It turns out the man has been watching you from a blind spot behind the glass cabinet. I like them. They're so beautiful. The man goes silent, with his head tilted for a couple of seconds after hearing your comment. He seems to be thinking about something. Don't you consider it cruel or bloodthirsty to them? No, I don't feel anything at all. You're such a weirdo. Thanks. <laughs> you think, aren't you talking about yourself? After you have a tour in his, in his display room, he locks you back in the small room you're in. Can I have my bread back? <laughs> you go to sleep to end the day. Yes! Survival rate increases. Until noon, you don't see breakfast or lunch being delivered. You're already starving. You're waiting for him to bring you dinner. But what you get is not dinner. Instead you hear the door was opened. A light shines through the crack of the half-open door, like looking like an intriguing invitation. You open the door and walk into that light. You arrive at the operating table outside the door. But this time it's not empty. There's a defrosted human corpse on it. The man pops out of somewhere. He unties the iron chains from your feet and hands a surgical, surgical knife in his hand to you. First, where do you think the first cut should be? Oh man. Oh man, oh man, oh man, I don't know. His voice tone sounds cold, like the kind of teacher who gives students hard questions on purpose. Oh, these all sound wrong. Attack him? No, I'm gonna die. <laughs> Can't do it. the corpse. No, stab. What if I stab the wrong spot and he gets mad at me, right? I don't know. You can't hurt innocent people, even if it's a corpse. But if you don't cut it, the man will know you're just pretending to admire his artwork so survive. Oh, damn it, right. After struggling with your thoughts, you drop the knife in your hand in fear. You are indeed pretending. Oh, crap. <laughs> no! No! <laughs> he locks you back in the small room you were in. There is no chance ever again after that. 
You can only eat the meal he sends every day and wait for the seventh day to come. Oh, am I dead already? I was joking I was going to speed run dying. Bad ending. Wow, that was fast. Okay, never mind. I don't need a speed run dying. I just sped run dying on accident. Alright, we're back to day three. We're back to day three. Alright. First, where do you think the first cut should be? We just, we just gotta stab it. We just gotta stab it. Maybe beautiful works always come with some sacrifices. Without hesitation, you stab the abdomen of the corpse with a knife. But due to the lack of professionalism, the lines you cut are crooked and ugly. Oh, he wanted me to be bad at it. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I forget sometimes. And this is when he gets close behind your back and holds your hand. You're both holding the surgical knife like you two are cutting a cake together. With his hand, the lines you cut become smooth and clean. <laughs> so romantic. You can smell an ocean perfume on him due to how close you are. It seems to be sprayed to, to cover up the smell of formalin. You can feel his warmth on your back, but his fingers are a little cold. He's focusing on cutting the corpse, and your hand keeps moving under his lead. He could have killed you or ignored you, but he didn't. You start to speculate on the purpose of his behaviors. Could it be that he wants someone who could ignore the cruelty in process and understand him? Oh, we have like major fix and vibes, don't we? <laughs> you think. After the happy creative time ends, you're locked in the room you were in. You go to sleep to end the day. Noon. Until noon, you don't see breakfast or lunch being delivered. You're starving. You notice that something is shining in the corner. A key. It seems like the man accidentally dropped it last night. Also, while I'm here, let me save while I'm not dead. <laughs> let me save. You open the door with the key. You go past the operating table that you two spent creative time together last time. The display room. Then, you discover that there are unnatural, uneven marks from one wall to the corner. You find a trap door. After pushing the trap door, you see a normal basement storage room. At the corner of the storage room, you see a stair that goes up. Huh, it turns out that this really is an underground secret room. Hidden layer by layer with trap door. No wonder the sound insulation is so good. You walk up the stairs and see a heavy wooden board. You push it hard. Okay, so we got... There's him with, I guess, his dad? And a Yankee candle. He's a millennial, so his plants are all dead. And... Oh, his initials are H.O. Look at us. <laughs> Investigating. <laughs> what, what catches your eye is the interior of the cozy cabin. Then you realize the heavy wooden board you just pushed is the back of a bookcase. You look around and find that there are insect specimens everywhere in the cabin. There's also a reindeer head specimen hanging on the wall. Then, you walk into the living room. Aww. You see a young man with a handsome face and pale skin lying on the sofa. The ocean scented perfume and the faint smell of formalin emanate, emanates from his body. It's him. He's the masked man who kidnapped you. But he's not wearing his mask at this time. His sleeping face has a ferocious expression. His neck is sweating and he seems to be trembling. It looks like he's sick. At this time, you decide to save the game because this is going to be a key point where things move. <laughs> save. Yes. That's a cute picture. We're probably going to die, so let's try to escape. If you don't run away now, then when? You open the door and find a forest with heavy snow outside. Oh, you remember why you came here? You were traveling alone. In the evening, your car hit a deer on the forest road and then stalled. With no cell phone signal in the deep mountains, you walked on the road for 30 minutes until it got dark. Then you saw the lights of a cabin in the forest and decided to ask the occupants for help. That's when you witnessed that scene. You witnessed a man wearing a mask dragging a corpse into the cabin, and unfortunately, you were discovered by the man. You ran wildly on the mountain road, but the man was more familiar with the terrain than you were and he quickly got in front of you and knocked you out. 
then when you opened your eyes, you were in the underground secret room. But this time, the man fell ill on the couch and there was no one to stop you. You cross the gate with confidence, but after you take a few steps... Oh, darn it. <laughs> he was fake sleeping. A sharp pain hits your calf and you look down at the blood red stain on the snow. Oh, sh oh, never m oh my god. Just now you realize that there are a lot of bear traps placed around the cabin. And it was difficult for you to identify them because they were covered by the snow. The insufferable pain makes you fall in the snow in front of you. No, it's more bear traps. As more bear traps are triggered, you are no longer you. You are an unrecognizable piece of flesh. The snow is dyed even brighter red, and you can only wait for the wolves to eat up your remains. Really? Another cannibal? He never woke up <laughs> to, like, come eat the rest of my body? Rude. Alright. I guess we'll take care of him. <laughs> you can't bear to leave him all alone. So you reach out and touch his forehead. Whoa, so hot. His forehead. <laughs> you try to find something that can cool him down. Let's investigate. The living room is spotlessly clean. Well, we're next. Oh my god, it's a lot of things. Okay, um... Bookcase. You find some of his profiles, profile files in the bookcase. Helen Otis. Oh, that's his name. Mail, birthday, October 1st. His birthday's a day after mine. Not the same year, obviously, but his birthday's a day after mine. I'm September 30th. <laughs> We're both Libras. <laughs> We're to investigate next. <laughs> There's a jar of cocoa powder and a cup on it. Oh, well, let's make him a cup of cocoa. What next? Wait, excuse me, there was more things. Oh, okay, I guess not. I, I guess I don't get to see what that locked thing was. There's a photo frame on the shelf. It's a photo of him standing at the entrance of a judicial... Yeah, judicial mental hospital with a man in the doctor's robe. seems like he did all of these. The workmanship of these specimens is exquisite. You don't think it's good for the patient to sleep on the sofa, but you can't move him with your strength. His expression is ferocious. He seems to be in pain. Oh, he's still having a fever. Wait, is hot cocoa good for fevers? Also, there we go, lockbox. There's a box of the combination lock on the shelf. Oh. Uh. Ten. Oops. Oh, one. Nineteen. Eighty. Okay, never mind. Ten. Eighty? Incorrect. Uh. <laughs> Incorrect, sorry. Try to get before he just comes and kills me for doing this. Um. Oh, uh, uh oh, one ten. Nineteen eighty. All right, I don't know. <laughs> I guess I'll, I'll have to investigate a different day and die a different day to find out more. Oh, the kitchen! The kitchen is spotlessly clean. There's some ice cubes in it. These can cool down his body temperature. You find some clean towels in the kitchen cabinet. I can soak the towel in ice water and place it on the patient's forehead to cool him down. Okay, I guess that's it here then. You return to the living room, wring out the excess water from a towel soaked in ice water, and place it on his forehead. His ferocious expression gradually softened. He once again noticed his fair skin and long eyelashes, and his slightly curly black hair. If you don't say he's a murderer, his sleeping face looks very harmless now. After a while... Oh, he's so cute! <laughs> he looks like a scared cat. 
He wakes up the scent of you bring Coco and sits up on the couch. He looks a little shocked. Mm -hmm. He looks around quickly and seems to understand what is going on. Why are you doing this? Because I died when I walked out the front door. <laughs> I want to ask myself that too. You saw me faint and didn't choose to run away. You're such a weirdo. Is there anyone weirder than you in this house? You can't help but bitch about him. <laughs> you seem to see the corners of his mouth rising slightly for a few seconds, and the atmosphere between you relaxes. He doesn't drink the cocoa you brewed him. He's, it seems he's still a little wary of you. Can you tell me who you are? Bloody Painter. That's the name they gave me for my modus operandi. If you find it difficult to pronounce, you can call me BP. Hi, BP. Even though what he told you was just a nickname, or at least, at least you know what to call him now. After the brief conversation on the sofa, he does not lock you in back. In, he does not lock you back in the underground secret room. Perhaps staying to take care of him when he was when he fell ill was enough to prove that you won't run away. You get up from the sofa and continue to look at the specimen decorations on the living room. He sits on the sofa, crosses his legs, picks up a book, and starts reading. By the way, you better not try to escape. There are traps all around the cabin, and only I know how to get in and out safely. Okay. He sits on the sofa. Soon a wave of sleepiness comes over you. Today you fall asleep on the sofa in the living room, not in the cold underground secret room. Survival rate increases! Heck yeah! Day 5. You see him busy cleaning in and out the, out the house early in the morning. I'll come help. Okay. Taking care of him, sure, but I'm like, ugh, doing chores and you get kidnapped? I'm cool, man. <laughs> After finishing speaking, you pick up the rag and bucket and join the cleaning. But you can't really see where this almost spotless house needs to be cleaned. You're just taking a clean wet rag and wiping on the clean cabinet. Do you usually love cleaning this much? It would soon be covered with a layer of dust. Although he doesn't talk much, his tone and voice give you a gentle feeling and doesn't make you feel nervous. You climb up the short ladder and wipe the high cabinets with the rag. Suddenly a cockroach crawls out from the crack in the cabinet. You're so frightened that you lose your balance and fall backwards. You close your eyes. But what you get is not the pain of falling up to the ground, but a warm feeling. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you open your eyes and find that he's holding you like a princess. He catches you with the same old cold expression on his face. Are you all right? Perhaps to resolve the awkwardness, he asks. Oh, I'm all right. It was just a cockroach. Hearing the word cockroach, he puts you down. He drops me. He's a blonk. He goes, no. <laughs> Gotta clean. <laughs> he takes two steps back from the cabinet you just wiped and then says calmly. Don't come near here yet. Huh? Why? It's dangerous. Um... <laughs> you can't help but chuckle at the thought of a murderer being afraid of cockroaches. Fine. Whatever you say. The interaction just now makes you feel a little warm from this mur from this cold murderer. At least you see more of his reactions and expressions. This is a rare relaxation you have felt in these tense days. He could have let you fall from the off the ladder, but he rushed over to catch you. Somehow, you feel that after a few days of getting along, maybe now you both have different ideas about each other than you originally had. I mean, has a house, he cleans, and potentially has a decent job and is creative. I mean, again, kind of could forgive the murdering part at this point. <laughs> it was the only, it was only clear, it was only a clear relationship between a murderer who wanted to hunt a, and a prey who was trying to escape. But now it has an extra layer of friendship, causing the interaction between you to, between you to have an indescribable sense of dissonance. Just when you pick up the old newspaper and prepare to wipe the windows, you find a police car parked on the road in the distance. Two police officers get out of the car and keep looking towards the cabin. At some point, BP is already behind you, looking looking out the window with you. Wait for a second. And then he walks out the door to talk to the police officers. Is there anything I can help you with? 
I am a Shrodish. Yes, I am. <laughs> Have you seen these people around here? The police officer takes out some photos from his pocket. Have these people committed a crime and are running away? No. These people are missing people around this area. I haven't seen them before, but wolves and bears often appear around here. Can we check out your cabin? Yes. Come in. BP behaves very kindly and politely. After speaking, he leads the way for the police officers. Uh, please, follow my footsteps. I placed some traps near the cabin to protect against wild wolves and bears. You don't want to step on them. Should, should I go into the, uh... The bunker? <laughs> Wait, they're gonna recognize me, aren't they? The police officer enters the house and sees you. Hello, this is... An old friend who came to visit me recently. You greet the police officers with a smile and a nod. At the same time, a police officer quickly looks at the, the missing photos, the missing person's photos in his hand. Then he puts the photo back into his pocket. Oh, that's sad. No one reported me missing. <laughs> it seems that your disappearance has not yet been discovered by anyone. You stand next to the bookcase blocking the entrance to the secret room. After searching around, the police find nothing unusual. Really? <laughs> a, it's a smidge a smidge unusual yeah <laughs> his trust in you increases today you sleep on the couch in the living room instead of the cold basement half asleep you hear the sound of someone approaching when you notice it the person seems to be very close to you you pretend to be asleep and the person just looks at your sleeping face quite quietly the man stretches out his hand and takes it back just as he's about to touch your hair. Tsk. Tsk. He turns around and leaves. <laughs> Day six! <gasps> Tell me I get breakfast. You see him busy in the kitchen for a while. The breakfast is served in front of you. <gasps> Ooh! <laughs> I love eggs for breakfast. That's a totally normal thing. I just, I just really do like eggs a lot. <laughs> There is a piece of toast with just with just the right crispiness on a large round plate and a poached egg on top of the toast and some a lettuce salad. The plating looks delicious. And some freshly brewed hot cocoa. The cutlery he gives you is a round plastic fork with no offensive features. You sit at the dining table and start eating while he sits in the chair opposite you and flips through a book. It's still snowing outside and listening to the squeaking sound of the fireplace the atmosphere in the cabin is particularly comfortable. As long as you ignore the fact that you're in the same room with the murderer who kidnapped you, everything's really relaxing. You look at him who's full of mysteries and some questions arise in your mind, and you decide to. <laughs> Don't be loud, carefully. Can I ask you a question? What is it? Oh, oh, I should save. I should, oh no, I guess I can ask about this, all of it. Potted plants. I saw a lot of potted plants on the shelves in the living room. Why are they all withered? I have tried my- I don't know why they always die. Oh. Is that foreshadowing? <laughs> Am I gonna die? <laughs> what book do you usually, usually read? I would read some anatomy and taxidermy books. Oh. But today is different. What are you reading today? The Truman Show. I feel dumb. That was a book before a movie? Huh? What's the book like? The whole world that the protagonist lives in, including himself, is all just someone's creation. Oh, are we doki doki it here? Everything that happens is watched by the audience. <laughs> and see no you guys. Say hi. Know. But he is completely unaware that he is in such a large theater. Very ridiculous. Right. I can't imagine this to happen in reality, or to me. If our world was like the Truman Show, how would the audience view the current situation? Oh. I can save, I can save, I can save. Thank goodness. Save. Excited? Excited. Why? They may be attracted by your charm and want to be killed by you. Incomprehensible, but 
What a bunch of weirdos with good taste. Okay. <laughs> it's hard to tell from his poker face whether he's seriously boasting or joking. You pick up the book next to you and start flipping through. It's a book about the possibility of having a completely opposite version of yourself in a parallel world. Hmm. If there is a complete opposite version of you, what do you think it would be like? Oh, that book. Let me think. Probably a guy wearing a burgundy coat and always having a smile on his face. Why a burgundy coat? Because I like blue. If he is the opposite of me, he should like red, right? Sure. <laughs> you asked bravely, what work are you going to use me for? He looks up at you for a moment. I was going to make you into some kind of doll at first. Your eyes are beautiful, but if they are left alone, they will become rotten and sunken. So I would like to dig your eyes out and put them in a glass jar and soak them in formalin to preserve them. Glass beads will be placed in the empty eye sockets to replace the eyes. You look very pleasing to the eye. So I would also like to keep the head intact. Oh, you called me pretty. You called me pretty. You're welcome. <laughs> Why do you say that first? Has his mind changed? You're curious, but you don't have the guts to ask any further. Alright, um... I think that's it. Yeah. And the morning conversation? Yes, please. It's noon. All right. To thank you for making breakfast for me today, let me make lunch in return. Mm. He frowns at you with an expression like, are you out of your mind? Don't worry, you said there are traps outside the house. Only you know how to get in and out normally. Even if I resist you with a knife, I can't escape. Okay, but I'll keep an eye on you. Don't try anything stupid. Great. As for what to cook in the ingredients, well, a bad idea flashes through your head and curiosity makes you ask. Uh, hey, do you eat human flesh? No. Why would I do that? I just use human bodies as materials for making art, and I never think about eating them. Aww. Come on, the last guy in the last eating game was a cannibal. Step up, man. Oh. I thought all of you murderers had some sort of degree of cannibalism. Let's put it this way. Do you eat paint and painting tools? Just because I kill people to use as materials to make works doesn't mean I will eat them. Also, I'm different from those who have fun committing a crime and kill purely for the sake of killing. Did, did I commit a crime? Don't confuse me with that kind of unprincipled guy. I wouldn't do anything unless necessary. You are here only because you witnessed the crime scene. Ah, oh, okay. I see. After hearing this, you decide to... <laughs> I have to! 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 Sorry, sir. But you got me. <laughs> Can I try cooking the human flesh? <laughs> Are you serious? Uh-huh. Why do you do that? I'm quite curious about the taste of human flesh. Come on. Haven't you been curious about it? All of it just sitting in your freezer? No, never thought of it. It also helps to get rid of the unnecessary material, doesn't it? I do have some useless cuts of meat in the basement freezer. Great! By the way, I won't eat it. He says, but he still takes it to the basement to open the freezer and takes out a piece of a human of human thigh meat. You turn on the oven to start to cook. BP watches the entire production process. Rather than worrying about worrying about you escaping, he's more worried about you blowing up the kitchen. <laughs> Ta-da! I cooked, honey! <laughs> Not long after, a roasted human thigh steak appears on the table. Oh, I, I did not cook that very well. <laughs> He serves with a human steak on the table and has no intention of eating. Huh? What's wrong, honey? You go ahead and eat. I have no appetite. Oh, fine. You cut the human steak into a size that fits your mouth, 
and put a piece into your own mouth. Mm hmm? Hmm. The human flesh tastes firm, very chewy, and has a distinct beefy flavor. Kinda like venison. Although it's delicious, it's difficult to chew, so you chew on it for a very long time. Beefy frowns and sits aside, watching you eat with gusto. <laughs> it's really delicious. Don't you want some? No. <laughs> he continues to watch you eat with gusto. At this point, your fork accidentally falls to the ground. You bend down to pick up the fork that had fallen to the bottom of the table, then raise your head to continue eating. Hmm? You look at your plate and notice that there seems to be a piece of meat missing. Not bad. Yay! I converted the killer into a cannibal. <laughs> Did you say something, honey? Nothing. He licks his fingertips and says, You had a fairly pleasant afternoon. <laughs> hey, hey. Huh? You're woken up from your sleep by the man. Oh, hi. His face is close to you, and his blue eyes are staring at you. Oh, what's wrong, darling? You sit up on the couch and rub your eyes. Got to go. Gotta go? I've noticed something unusual about the number of police cars patrolling nearby recently. They must have some relevant evidence and are doubting it. It is very likely there is an ambush outside. It's snowing heavily outside now, and I think it's time to leave now. Come with me or not. It's your choice. Oh, oh, the game wants me to save? I did not do that. You choose to go with him. What do you want me to do? I'm fine with both choices, but I need you to look me in the eyes and tell me. What do you prefer me to do? You stare at his eyes. I prefer. He hesitates to speak and looks away, looking like he's thinking about something. Hold his hands. I saw that timer. <laughs> Your behavior makes him a little panicked. And he doesn't seem to be good at this kind of situation. You notice his ears are flushed. And this unexpected reaction makes you want to tease him a little bit. What do you prefer me to do? I prefer. After a moment of silence, he slowly speaks. You come with me. He tries hard up he tries hard to look you in the eyes and speaks his thoughts. We'll set off early tomorrow morning. Day seven, I made it. Follow my footsteps. Oh, I miss your mask and your whole little killer outfit. You follow the shoe prints he leaves in the snow, and finally succeed in avoiding the many traps around the cabin. Just as you are walking through the forest, you hear movement behind you. Freeze! Oh, I have a jacket. I'm good. In the snowstorm, several policemen who are, who were lying in ambush chase after you. You ignore them and keep running forward. Bang! A gunshot shoots across the sky and you feel a pain in your left calf. You are shot. Oh damn, they shot me real quick, huh? He turns to look at you as if he's considering whether to leave you. Run! You yell at him. But he approaches you. And he holds you in his arms. You feel the warmth on your forehead. Kisses your forehead. Aww. You feel the time freeze in this moment. The kiss is almost like a goodbye. Oh. Because <laughs> he couldn't do anything for me, but fine. <laughs> then he leaves and runs forward, disappearing into the heavy snow. <laughs> you're later taken back to the police for questioning. You say throughout the process that you're a victim. On that note, you're not lying. But they probably find out that I ate human meat, and they're like, mmm. <laughs> you don't reveal any unnecessary details. Since there's no relative evidence to prove that you're an accomplice, the police can only release you after a long period of interrogation. After that. Oh, I have a nice room. Two years? Two years? Aw. Two years passed. Now you live in a beautiful little apartment. You live an ordinary life as if what happened two years ago never happened. Today is Halloween. Oh, it's not. I should... I'm not delaying the release of this. <laughs> I mean, I already did a little bit. And every household nearby has put some thought into making decorations. But for you, it's just another day at work. When you return to your apartment after getting off of work in the evening, the strange thing is that as soon as you open the door, you feel a gust of wind. You remember that you closed the window before going out. 
Just when you're about to close the window, you find a gift left by someone on the table next to the windowsill. A red rose. You don't know why, but you have a feeling that BP has been here. Every Halloween after that, you receive a rose at your residence. It's like a once a year greeting. Although he says nothing, the rose seems to tell everything. Although you have certain similarities, you are two people from different worlds after all. Perhaps living on your own life. Perhaps living your own life this way has been the best outcome for the both of you. Good ending for two different worlds. Oh, that was sweet. I'm gonna try real quick and see what happens if I just feed him normal food. Oh wait, no, let me do this one. This is a real quick one. What if I don't? I want to stay and live a normal life. I think this crazy journey should not go on anymore. Okay, I understand. Suddenly his face slowly moves closer to you. Just when he's about to touch you, does he stab me? <sighs> he takes a piece of cloth and covers your mouth and nose hard. After struggling hard for two or three minutes, your consciousness gradually becomes blurred. Oh, so I'm not suspicious to the police. When you open your eyes, you're back in the basement again. You're tied to a chair and you can't move your body. You try to break free, but you fail. The rope is tied very firmly. You hear someone's footsteps getting closer to the door. The door opens. Oh. <laughs> he walks in slowly, holding something behind his back. He moves closer and closer to you until he's at your ear. You can hear his breathing in your own heartbeats. You close your eyes out of fear. Oh. You can feel that he's scratching your skin softly with the back of a knife, and the cooled metal stimulates your nerves. His palm is holding the back of your neck through his glove, as if he is studying your face and thinking about where to cut it. Fear boils inside of you, tears filling your eyes unconsciously. Suddenly, he fiercely holds up the back of your neck, forcing you to look him in the eyes. He slowly speaks with a soft tone in your ear. If you stay here, you might reveal my information to the police. The risk of keeping you alive is too high. But even if I say I want you to come with me, a normal person like you will leave me one day, eventually. Bro, I fed you a human thigh. I don't know if you call me a normal person. I quite like you. And if it's you, I would like to turn you into a work and put you somewhere. I can see you every day. It's you who made me realize that I might be more selfish than I thought. Don't You're welcome. Worry. I'll saw your head off as material for artwork and visit you every day. Aww. Thank you for spending these few days with me. I felt quite at ease. But also, I'm sure you visit my corpse once a day, but only my living body once a year, like rude. We'll have more time to spend together in the future. Blech. The red flower flows from the neck. Now you can either feel or think. Everything becomes dark. Aww. I have eyes. <laughs> your body and skull are separated. He finds a new place after he takes your head and leaves the cabin. He carefully makes your head into a specimen, and your eyes are replaced with glass beads. You're made into a beautiful but creepy doll, and he visits you often. You become his favorite work. You're with him forever in the form of art. Wait, I got forever. Hey, good ending. <laughs> I win. All right, so that's a bloody painter dating sim. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go find as many endings as I can later. Let's see. So, yeah. oh, I only have two more endings to grab. No, that's not true because I can die at any time, right? Because I got bad endings too. Ooh, 14? Neat. Anyway, <laughs> that's it for this. If you have any more horror games you guys want me to check out, let me know in the comments, and I'll see y'all later. Bye!